thought I would give a quick mathematics, mathematics lesson today. This is the infamous quote from Nikola Tesla. If you knew the magnificence of 3, 6, and 9, then you would have a key to the universe. This is called vortex mathematics. And yes, the representation that you're looking at here looks very occultic. In fact, it is the basis of the occult in all black magic casting symbols, as well as applications in physics. This way of doing vortex mathematics is pretty interesting because what the Tesla mean by understanding the numbers 3, 6, and 9, and why are they in the red square in here? It's pretty easy once you understand what you're looking at. Like, so I'm going to show you this diagram here. And this is basically the foundation of what you're looking at. And the way that all these numbers can be broken down to simple forms and the relationship they have between each other. To understand this, we're going to be doing some pretty basic math. And what do I mean by that? Um, as you go through the circle, and I'll show you, we're going to be doubling a lot of the numbers. For example, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. When you get to the double digits, though, like a plus a being 16, we're, this is, yes, this is numerology that we're getting into, which is another big side thing into the occult. I don't do too many numbers on numerology, but this is the basis of numerology. So why don't we just get to where it all starts, right, which is vortex mathematics. Um, and this vortex mathematics, this concept, has been around since Babylon. The Babylonian math system was based on increments of six. There'll be some other things I'll point out to you in that circle, such as the square encompassed from the Masons is directly <laughs> based on one of those triangles that you get out of that representation I just showed you. For example, this diamond right here, that, yeah, that is the Masonic square and compass because their symbols have multiple meanings. And it ties heavily into the occult for certain applications, that's all I'm saying. So to break down double digit numbers, 8 plus 8 is 16, and you do 1 plus 6, which equals 7. This is the foundation of how this mathematics works, by breaking numbers down to their simplest form. And it doesn't take very long to learn. So we're going to start at 1. Now I want you to notice in this circle we have 9 numbers. How many times does 9 go into 360 degrees? Four times. Well, 9 goes into 36 four times. So that means that between a 9, the 1, and the 2, we are looking at 40 degrees between each of the numbers in the 360 degree circle. 40 degrees. So we're going to start at 1. There's a reason why 9 is here in the center. We'll learn about the number 9 last and it, what it plays in all this and why that number is so sacred. But we're going to start at 1 and we're going to move around this circle here. And see the relationship. What I'm about to teach you here is the basis of all sacred geometry on earth and all natural ways that things grow in nature. Such as the, um, the hexagonal pattern that you'll see in plant cells and animal cells. Is all based off what I'm going to show you here, which is the numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8. The numbers 3, 6, and 9 are a little different. There's a reason why they're shown by the dotted line here. So starting at 1, you move your way around this vortex circle here. 1 plus 1 is 2. Again, we're going to be using this very simple mathematics concept right here to understand this. So, we're going to draw a line from 1 to 2, and each time we come to a new number, we're going to double it. 2 plus 2 equals 4. So, we would draw a line from this 2 here, skipping the 3, coming right down to the 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. So, then we would draw a line here, coming all the way up to the 8 here. Now what is 8 plus 8? That is 16. 16, you have a 1 and a 6. 1 plus 6 is 7, bringing us to 7. Now 7 plus 7 is 14. 
one plus, which gives you one and four. One plus four is five, bringing you back down to this. You double five, you get ten. One plus zero is one, and it brings you right back to the number one. And you'll see this natural progression, how it moves to these numbers, and this is the relationship they all have with each other. And they can all be broken down, like I said, to simple numbers. That is the foundation for all sacred geometry. Now we're going to start talking a little more about the vortex and getting into the physics aspect of this. Um, specifically, such concepts as quantum entanglement. Because the numbers 3, 6, and 9, they're not exactly the same. 9 is like the baseline for all of this, for the vortex, which is why it stands up here with a straight line coming in at the top. So we're going to talk about the relationship of 3 and 6, obviously. Now, using the same concept that we just used, 3 plus 3 is 6, right? Bringing you to the number 6. When you double 6, you get 12. What is 12? Well, that's a 1 and a 2, making 3. And basically, the 3 and the 6 oscillate back and forth between each other. That is the positive and negative nature of the relationship they have with each other. Now, using the same concept that I just used to go around this vortex wheel, it also applies if you cut the numbers in half, not just double them. Meaning, if you cut the number 1 in half, you get 0 0.5. And 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 equals 0 0.10, or a 1 plus 0, bringing you back to 1. So, it also works in the same way of cutting the numbers in half. But... When you cut the numbers, like 6, you cut that in half, obviously, you're getting a 3. Um, when you cut 3 in half, you're getting 1.5. 1 plus 5 is 6. So that's the relationship between 3 and 6. They oscillate back and forth. Quantum entanglement is the idea that every positive uh, proton in the universe has a negative proton that interacts with through space and time. That's quantum entanglement. So that is the relationship between the three and the six, the as above, so below nature. Pretty interesting, huh? And this is more, this, and what I'm showing you here is the foundation of all physics in the universe. This is why Tesla was quoted. This is not just like some Pollard trick where you would take numbers and have people add them up and say, oh, okay, it's always going to come out to this amount. Now, this is a reoccurring thing in physics and nature, and becomes the foundation of Taurus fields, which we'll talk about them in a second. I'll show you what they are. And yes, this becomes the foundation of a lot of black magic casting symbols in the occult. Now, you may be asking yourself, before I get to number nine here, um, if you've done the math in your head about what we just did with nine, you might start to understand. But people might be wondering, where is the number zero in all this? Well, zero means nothing, right? It's not, re well, the zero, you could say it's actually represented in this diagram by the big zero right here. But it's not, um, zero technically is not a number. It's the absence of any uh, value becomes nothing. So this is the idea that nature, or the Big Bang, Everything arose from nothing, and that's the concept of the Big Bang Theory now, isn't it? This is why they tie it in with being the um, vortex mathematics being the um, numerology of God of all things, and the ancients took it very sacred. So the number nine, why is that so revered in the occult? Well, nine plays a very special number here because nine will always come back to itself. If you double nine, you get 18. What is 18? 1 plus 8, which equals 9, meaning that 9, if you cut it in half, you get 4.5. What is 4 plus 5? That is 9. So it comes back to itself. And it stands as the baseline for this vortex math here. It doesn't interact with any other numbers here. This is why it's 
a sacred number, for example, like in Hinduism, highly revered in the occult, 9-11. Yeah, and for occultists that follow numerology, uh, this is why it's so revered, the number 9. You may think that the, the reasons why numbers like 6 and 3 are so revered in the occult because of 666. Uh, yeah, they do have dual significance sometimes, but it's actually the oscillation back and forth between 3 and 6. So 3, 6, and 9 share a very different relationship between these numbers, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8, which stand as, these stand as the basis of all sacred geometry. And in fact, using the same, well, the basis here, you can make, for example, the flower of life. I think I had to pull it up here. I had some, uh, yeah, this, this is what we're getting into. It's Taurus. And that is the foundation of Taurus mathematics. So by understanding that very simple mathematical concept I just gave you, you could start looking at Taurus and Vortex mathematics, and it might not seem so overwhelming. Here's a, um, a Taurus Vortex, and you see the numbers inside of here going from 1 to 9, and it's the same relationship that they play. The center here, the hole, this is in space what we would call a black hole. Black holes are also based around the same vortex math. The black hole, or the center of the torus, is the number zero. That's why it's not represented. That is nothing. That is everything from the outside being pulled into the inside, and then it recirculates itself. And if you ever seen like three-dimensional torus fix here, let me pull up a GIF. That, um, then you can understand. You've probably seen these moving vortexes before. I'm trying to get a GIF image here to pull up. If I could find one, <laughs> I think you get the concept. Um, you can animate these. And that this is the basis of it right here. You know what a vortex is in a, in a water, like when you pull the drain out of the pull the drain out of the tub, and you'll see the water spinning around. Like when you flush the toilet, that's a vortex being created in liquid. But it also has applications into physics and the universe of all things. And it is the relationship between these numbers. Now in this vortex mathematics, there goes one right there, sort of. The numbers 3, 6, and 9 become the basis of these um, higher mathematics applied to physics and Getting into that, whereas the 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 become the basis of all sacred geometry. Now, in the occult, yes, there are negative practices applied to the same concept. You're looking at a magic circle right there. These 12 plates here, we got everything in here from the Gnostic gems. Uh, for example, this is Abrahas. This is the reptilian deity that the Rosicrucians in the Vatican worship. Going back to these are their plots, um, secrets of their <laughs> mystical order. But when you look at some of their um, diagrams, such as this, these are based on vortex mathematics. These are diagrams you're supposed to study, and you'll notice they're always in circles, and they're using the same basic vortex mathematic concepts um, that is the interchange of light and dark throughout the cosmos and then we have the production of the physical worlds most infamously you'll notice the um, the man standing in the circle done by Leonardo da Vinci that is based on the Taurus mathematics design that I just showed you I often tell people in the occult and black magic works around the movement of energy, electromagnetic energy. And that again comes right back to this concept. This becomes the foundation of all gematria, numerology, occultism, the Kabbalah, high level physics. As above, so below. Um, that is the relationship between three and six. Nine, the, again, the reason it's so sacred is the only number that comes back to itself. And stands as the baseline of the vortex. 
the number zero is not represented in this because again in a black hole or a Taurus it is the black hole again and that's what Nikola Tesla meant by the numbers three six and nine being the key to the universe to understand higher level physics Taurus fields um, and it it just comes down to simple mathematics like this just breaking numbers down into their simplest form this cuts out a lot of the need for um, advanced mathematical equations physics equations and um, comes down to the concept of kiss keep, keep it simple stupid mother nature has made a pretty ingenious design and some people believe like me if you're Christian obviously that this is the mind of God you are looking at here that yes mathematics is the foundation of the universe Nikola Tesla was also quoted as saying if you could understand vibration and frequency you would understand the universe and it, it applies to the same basic vortex mathematics concept yeah it also becomes the basis of all occultism especially the Kabbalah is based around these um, relationships that these numbers have between each other and it's pretty interesting um, as you go around the wheel for example the way this is set up is pretty ingenious not going by the lines that we already have here but let's say for example we went straight across and just went on a parallel axis here of the numbers well one and eight is nine two plus seven is nine three plus six is nine four plus five is nine so you see even how nine why it's in the center there these lines here again are going around as you double these numbers one plus one being two two plus two equals four four plus four equals eight eight plus eight being sixteen which is a one and a six which equals seven 7 plus 7 being 14, 1 plus 4 is 5, and then 5 plus 5 being 10, which 1 plus 0 brings you back to 1. This is the basis right here of all sacred geometry and the basis of all life on Earth. Uh, the way the cell molecules are put together, hexagonal design patterns in plants and Mother Nature. Uh, the basis how whirlpools happen, tornadoes, hurricanes, Th those are based on vortexes and it th so the same concept applies in nature itself i wanted to do this for a while though um i never covered i don't cover numerology too much or the the numerology behind the occult so i figured it'd be probably a good time to, to start doing it just to delve a little bit deeper into the occult besides just the mystical aspects of it and until we speak again this is kenanigan and take care